Okay, we're on. It's on. It's happening. 45 minutes straight, no edits. So you were saying mukbang. <laughs> like you drove down that. I don't even understand if I fully understand what a mukbang is. It's a video where somebody eats and there is, uh, I, my understanding is, I because I came through to it through the the ASMR community, which is a vast world of magic. I didn't know that it was a community. Oh, it is. It really is. And well, there like, are subgenres. Oh, with, my God. Yes. Okay, go on. They tend to be very nice commenters on the YouTube, I've noticed. Uh, do you mean sweet. like like in the comment section, everybody's yeah, cool? Yeah, I think it's because a lot of people are trauma bonding to uh, whoever is their ASMR artist is. And so it's a lot of people like checking in on each other, asking if the ASM artist is having a good day or is not. Is that what that's called? AM artist? ASM artist. ASM artist. So I've only ever watched Mukbang for the purpose of potentially getting brain tingles. And it <laughs> only happens with honeycomb chomping for me. Honeycomb chomp, like the cereal. Oh, no, no like no, the actual no, like honeycomb. The actual honeycomb. Oh, yeah. I don't think I've ever actually tried a honeycomb before. It's really good. I mean, as a bird, it might be dangerous for oh, you, Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Like, I think if you got that stuck in your, in yeah, your beak. in my like, craw. Yeah, in your craw, like, good God. Yeah, I don't even want to think about it. It seems like the opposite of ASMR. No, don't do it, don't do it, don't even try it. But would we'll... it be hot, though? Somebody would get hard. <laughs> that's another thing about just the internet in general, I think, is that any place you go, there's something. There's Wolf Blitzer has a blog that makes somebody hard. I don't want to know anything about the Wolf Blitzer mukbang Venn diagram because <laughs> I can already see that kind of human in my. It's like a science teacher with a beard sitting at home being like, shut the door, turn on my HEPA filter. I'm going to watch Wolf Blitzer just fucking destroy that bag of fucking Dots pretzels. You know what? If Wolf Blitzer ever does ASMR, I'm so fucking in. <laughs> so in. I've had an, an on and off series of feelings about him, all positive for many oh, years. Oh, wow. Really? Yep. This is a this is serious. Yeah, it's really, that is a long-term thing for me where I'm just, I'm, I'm very pro. I don't know if he and I agree on all things i've never spoken to him Probably but that's never part of should, the but that's, that's part, part of the of, mystery right that's what makes it hot it's part of it's part of the mystery it's part of asmr you know you, you <laughs> well, I, I can't wait till wolf blitzer starts an asmr channel it's gonna be so good oh my god what okay all right so <laughs> just thinking about what he would just be like face down in like like dipping dots. I don't know what is like what's big on the ASMR food okay. mukbang channels. Like what do you want to let's like what's the best because like it's like humans with slime, they're like, oh, I love the like crunchy slime or the like glitter mm -hmm. slime or the slime with transformer parts in it or some shit. What's like the muk mukbang? <laughs> Clearly I'm not on a lot of cams. But like what is like a mukbang? All right, what's Wolf Blitzer eating on his mukbang right, uh, ASMR channel? Or what, actually, what's the whole thing? Cuz it I'm, doesn't have to be eating. Here's what I'm going to I'm going to just soft pitch this. And Wolf, I know you're listening. Yeah. You might be actually Wolf Blitzer might be watching. Uh, he's probably around. Yeah, he's probably around. Wolf! He might be under this table. But here's what I'm pitching. We got churros, man. <laughs> Wolf He'll be by. <laughs> so I want a Wolf Blitzer ASMR channel. It's on YouTube. It's definitely just him with like a $49.99 ring light he got from <laughs> Jeff Bezos sent to him. <laughs> and he's sitting in a corner of his rumpus room. And he's got like, he's painted the wall extra white because he's like, you know what, whatever. It's uh, this is not, there's no extra. And he's only, by the way, he's only using his iPhone 10 yeah. microphone. I want to believe that he got some like, like uh, panels, like some yeah, like yeah. dampener panels and so like LED lights on the bottom. So it's got like a soft blue or purple haze going on behind him. Yeah, but the but the dampener the damper damper panels aren't working though. Like, no, the, the no LED it's very light looks cool. We there's can an awful everything. lot of ambience. Yeah, everything the family's doing, the children, maybe there's grandchildren, they're skittering around. There's You're a fights. Roomba every now and then. For sure, the landscaper. And so what I think that Wolf Blitzer's doing in his subpar ASMR setup in the corner of his rumpus room in what I assume is I don't know Georgetown in yeah, DC. Is that where he maybe? is? Yeah, maybe he's Wolf, in Manhattan. Where do you live? Uh, he left. Oh my God, he was just gonna come in. Yeah, he was. I scared oh, him he off. He got scared. That's, That's cause right. you yell. You can't yell too loud. Yeah, he, well, he's skittish. He loves ASMR because yeah. it's very soothing. It's like a fox. You gotta like let let them come to you.
And you slowly move towards each other inch by inch yeah. until one day you meet in the middle and you're friends forever. Yeah, I read The Little Prince. Oh, I know where beautiful. this is going. Well, mm. listen, here's what I'm thinking. Okay. I He's going to have an ASMR channel that's my favorite things, which is like tapping. And he's also going to whisper. Ah! I hate it so much. <laughs> I hate it. You have the misophonia. I have channel. a misophonia, <laughs> well, mom. Well, you're a bird. And Mr. Birds Megorium's are misophonium. <laughs> That's my ASMR page. It's me screaming about how much I hate it. It's like it's Wolf Blitzer chewing a pickle and me being like, "Stop it!" Ah! So your channel, Chad, it, the Chad the Bird YouTube ASMR channel is actually Chad the Bird having active misophonia. Re it's reaction videos. It's like yeah. those people who yeah. are like, oh, I'm hearing Miley Cyrus for yeah. the first time. This is you reacting. <laughs> it's, just, it's me listening to like, okay, it's Rascal Flats and then somebody like sucking up some fucking ramen. <laughs> and every now and then I'm just like, oh, I love Rascal Flats. Oh, God, stop it. I I want Wolf Blitzer ASMR of him uh, delivering a very like gut wrenchingly sad breaking news announcement <laughs> with pop rocks in his mouth, <laughs> straight to camera. And mind you, the camera is an iPhone 10 camera. <laughs> I'll, I'll just remind you, we do on a Zoom call because he has to chip out every now and then to oh, be like, because sure. <laughs> he's Wolf Blitzer. You know he doesn't know how to use Zoom. No, but he has people who can do that for him. Right, but they're not there for his his like late night with the Blitz. Oh, I think he's ASMR <laughs> channel. Late night with the Blitz. Welcome with three to the Z's. Blitz. With three Z's because it's at night. It's at it's, night. It helps sleep. It's late night with the Blitz. <laughs> and actually, one of my favorite ASMR artists, her name is Julia. She's it's Blitz with multiple Z's. I is it really? Many. Yeah. I oh also wow. Like, well, we uh, can't use that then. Wolf's gonna like, be really mad about uh, it. My my buddy Emma has a channel called Whispers Red. Oh, cool. Very good. Uh, there's the 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 queen of ASMR would be Maria of Gentle Whispering. Okay. All of these people, I believe, have dabbled in a little bit of mukbang here or there. Maybe Emma never has. Um, but mostly it's tapping, um, role play, where somebody is uh, helping you figure out of what season you are with colors. Are you in autumn? Are you oh. in winter? I thought you meant like somebody like helping you with your taxes. You're like, oh, too, yeah, you're going to want to claim that. There's for sure accountant role play ASMR. Hot. A lot of the appeal of ASMR is personal attention. It's not necessarily like... You look so sexy. <laughs> I didn't know that they had gremlin ASMR. So I didn't know that Jim ASMR. Henson was into ASMR. Skeksis ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> there is, there's definitely like horned up people who only watch the clip of that Skeksis specifically oh, yeah. reacting. Who are like, yeah. Well, if there was going to be one within the like the rule 34 of the internet where there's porn about it's going to be that yeah, no, skexy that yeah, he was the standout yeah because he was like that skexy was willing to leave i mean well he was rejected by the rest right. of them he went on a, his own quest to destroy the gelflings spoilers and, for the dark crystal yeah if you guys catch it before it leaves theaters <laughs> It's not the same seeing it on Netflix. It's you want to have the you Dark want at Crystal least forty five minutes where you're like I don't know what the fuck is going on, but you want to be in the theater so you can't leave. See it in IMAX. Yeah, definitely. Forty X limited run at IMAX. A lot right of slow now. moves and mist. Uh, but th I, honestly, did you watch the uh, um, the uh, the prequel series that they did, the Age of Resistance or whatever? Was wait, on Netflix? What? What? Oh my god, it's so good. Is it about the Dark Crystal? Yeah, this it's the is, Dark Crystal it's not Age a Star of Resistance. Because if it was a Star Wars, I guess it would be on Disney. It'd be on Disney. This what? is on Netflix. They made with Henson, they made a prequel called The Age of Resistance. It's fucking dope. Is it better than the DC? Like the DC universe? The oh no, Dark you mean Crystal. the movie? Yeah. Because yeah, and first off, it's better than most things Zack Snyder dreams about. But yeah, it's <laughs> also better than the original Dark Crystal. It's like real fast paced, and the dialogue's really cool. And they do all this cool shit where they like do more stuff with um the like the Gelflings and the characters, but they like CGI at all the wires, so you see a lot more work, like a lot more leg work and stuff. It's fucking cool, man. Do 
Chad, did the Gelflings have less shitty voices? Because I don't like their voices. Oh, no, it's like, I I think like Timothy Chalamet is one of them. There's like all these really great, I don't think, don't quote me on that. But it's like a lot of really dope English actors are the voices. Oh, that's cool. And then I forget, there's a couple of Saturday Night Live guys are the Skeksis. Oh, I love that. That's great. That works. Yeah, no, get into it. Get into it. So uh, what I need to get into is convincing Wolf Blitzer of CNN to start an ASMR channel. I need to watch the, the I, I'm assuming, an- Antifa prequel to the Dark Crystal. Yeah, it, actually, that's, like, legit. Yeah, and and just spend more time here with my bird friend. Hey. It's so good to hang out with you, Chad. Welcome to Chicago. Thank you so much. Thank I still you. don't know what mukbang is, though. It's uh, eating. It's eating <laughs> food. It's eating food for the TV. And people, some mukbang people are really, they've been making great money for years just chomping on stuff. So it's just like, stuff. but is it like eating a lot of different kinds of things? It, you could have, there's people who specialize in certain things, like oh. candy bars, for example. Oh, there's like, other uh, people who eat anything, and people are like, I just love the way you chomp on that. I don't care what it is. <laughs> I mean, maybe I should get in that. I, yeah. I got like, I got some deep chomps. Yeah, I can chomp could, some things. You, a hundred, I think the fandom would The crunchier, the better, right? Yes, okay. yes. Or... But not always. See, I jumped in and said yes, because I like crunchy sounds in general. I'm like a child, a toddler who likes a, a crinkly thing. <laughs> but some people like the slurpy sounds Ugh. and the, yeah, wet mouth sounds make yeah. me want to die. Yeah. That, would, speaking of what's going to be on Mr. Megorium's misophorium, yeah, no, it's just mouth sounds. Mr. Megorium's mis- misophorium <laughs> is your, is Chad the Bird's other, other YouTube channel. Yeah. And Dustin Hoffman shows up as Mr. Megorium. <laughs> and just said, did you ever see that movie? That's a movie that happened in your world, human. <laughs> Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium, starring Dustin Hoffman as like kind of a Willy Wonka. It's like Willy Wonka's creepy Christian brother. Okay, cool. That's what that movie looked like to me. Chad, hmm. would you say that when you watch uh, a film yep. uh, in human world, where it's clear that the creatures in it are kind of avian, like the Skeksis, clearly to me modeled on a sort of a bird situation. Sure, sure, raptors. How do you feel about that? How does that strike you? Do hot. You- I think it's hot. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's what I could. That's what I. That's where I come from. Like, how does it feel watching like basketball, where you're like, <laughs> look at what humans can do? That's what I feel. Like when I watch Jurassic Park, I'm in the back, like, yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah, grandpa. <laughs> Do it! Look at the gam gams on Grampy. <laughs> that's sub- he works out. Eat those kids. Yeah, that's how he can take that hill like nobody's fucking business. Like it's wet. That's wet mud that T Rex is walking in, and he's <laughs> top heavy. He's fucking bullshit arms, and he's just like gunning it for the camera. I'm like, you go, guy. <laughs> at least I assume it's a guy. Shouldn't gender dinosaurs. Did you? Uh, do you ever go into like? Uh, say like Museum of Natural History in New York City, American Museum of Natural History. Say right. the, the one down in D.C. Uh, he, right here in Chicago, the Field Museum. Do you ever go and see dinosaur skeletons and feel some kind of way? Yeah, if you were to like come into the room and see me standing in front of like the T. Rex skeleton, that's straight up like like one of those memes that make you cry, mm-hmm. like little bird dreaming to fly. Like just me, I'm super tiny because I'm like three apples high, and I'm standing in front of the T. Rex just like by myself in the light, just being like. Like with a little thought bubble of me just like chomping villagers. That's what it looks like. Oh, it's beautiful. inspiring as fuck. That's <laughs> to watch. That's so beautiful. Isn't it? I wanna I I'm getting misty eyed thinking about me. Oh, it's so doing beautiful. That. I would love nothing more than to go to O'Hare, to terminal whatever that you it's, go to. That's true. Got, no one everyone knows <laughs> got a dino Everyone knows that there's a fucking brontosaurus there, or I guess it's a patasaurus now. Everybody knows that there's an apatosaurus there, but no one fucking knows what terminal it is. Yeah, that's true. Because no, oh hell like, is like you... a fucking nightmare hellscape <laughs> of so like big. confusion. It's uh it's straight up like the back rooms. I've stumbled upon it whilst flying United and American, and I oh, don't yeah. know how. But, uh, yeah, you just sort of come upon it and go, wow, that's a big fucking dinosaur creature. Yep, it's and right I'm, there. And I'm You've... tired and I want Auntie Anne's pretzel. Because <laughs> it smell. The Ooh, smell is what gets you. It's so good. It's just butter and bread. Oh, Speaking God. of mukbang, would that be something that you could do on a mukbang? You could Does that make anything. a noise? Does that make a noise, though? Uh, well, if you chomp enough. It depends mm. on your technique. 
Like, I, I want to be clear for the fans of myself, of course, the legions of fans, and also Chad, the Bird fans. What's up? I am not specifically just a mukbang person. I am sort of a global ASMR. I am open to all forms mm. of ASMR except wet mouth sounds. <laughs> that, mm-mm, not going to do it. I, you're, not big, you're not big on WMS? <laughs> not no. a big, Not a big... Wemouse fan. No, and the sec- the deliberately sexy ASMRs are very funny. They, it's too much. It has to be too much. I it's like a little really subtlety funny. in most things, but to have somebody just be like, "Oh, I spilled yogurt on my boobs." It'll also be somebody who's like, "Twins take care of you," and it's like <laughs> some lady who learned how to like Haley Mills herself using her. <laughs> iPhone 14 and is like just makes two of them and she's like in her closet in her weird dorm room and just being like using a fake Russian accent or something. Oh no! The internet is a fucking hellscape. They'll put a wig on they'll put a wig on a camera and brush its hair. Now I do love a hair salon a hair salon role play Oh my god I didn't know that that was I mean I guess if you can dream it Yeah it's just like and now it's I don't know when I started. I guess maybe it was like uh, in the final years of my drinking career before I got sober. I think I was having a lot of trouble falling asleep because of the darkness inside me. And so I would just, (laughs) I found ASMR and was like, this is soothing. Mm. You know, because once you try enough booze or enough whatever and it's not working, you got to do something else. You're out there jonesing for the thrill. You get wild. Hitting the streets. And you chase the dragon that is a woman going, (laughs) welcome to... Your village. I have an indiscriminate accent that's not real, cannot be determined. Let's go bake some bread. Oh, camera angle change. Now you're the loaf of bread I'm baking. And they like do squishy motions in your in the camera's face. I guess that it makes sense because if you're just like really looking for something like chemical dependency situation, mm-hmm. you want to go for the most batshit thing you can find. <laughs> yeah, you do. You to want- make you not think about the horrors. You do, and you. I think you cycle through all the substances that you are willing or able to use, which for me, thank God, was fairly limited, <laughs> mostly bourbon. And um, then you get to a place. That's where a you're pretty like, safe addiction. Yeah, it's all right, you know, until it's not. Uh, <laughs> for those of you out there, if you or anyone you know are are seriously like going through addiction, there are help things. You don't have to watch someone eat pretzels and fucking O'Hare don't, under don't. a brontosaurus. <laughs> You get to the point where, but the, you do have to watch Wolf Blitzer. You do have to watch Wolf Blitzer. If you get, that's how I'm going to sell them on it. Like if you, <laughs> if you need, if you need help, I I highly recommend the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Uh, Rain is a great organization. The Trevor Project is a great organization. There are all these great organizations out there to help with mental health, to help with addiction, all sorts of different things. But if if it's like you're really white knuckling it, let's say, let's say you've got the help, right? You've got that because I've been there too. You get the help. You're getting the help. You're working on yourself. Whatever your issue is, you're really trying to get better or just stay alive. And you're having a tough night and you're like, oh, God, I'm fiending for this, that, the other thing. I'm going to call that person I shouldn't call. I'm going to text that person I shouldn't text. How about this? How about you let your fingers do the walking on your phone, your laptop, your iPad, your Wi-Fi enabled device? And you mosey on over to some lady who seems vaguely nurturing in the way you wish you had been nurtured. And she says stuff like, welcome to this hotel. I would like to check you in. Are you one of our frequent customers? Welcome back. See, I'm in. Yep. I'm in. I've, I feel like I would get past that. Like, even if I'm just like, I haven't had coffee today. Exactly. And I'm going through a caffeine headache. I'd be like, well, now hold on a second. I don't really need that coffee. I can just watch this, uh, like, nondescript uh, human just smonch this fucking bag of pirate's booty and, uh, and cheddar cheese. Because <laughs> what the fuck is going on? There's a woman I follow who's incredible, who's, like, an incredible... She has just an amazing, uh, she's great. She's from some country, who knows. Uh, one of them. One of them. She's from one of the countries. Maybe it's this one. I don't Probably think so. Idaho. Probably Idaho. It's from the great, the People's Republic of Idaho. <laughs> and she has, she does amazing, like, like she's a legit artist. Like, I think this broad might work on video games and stuff. Oh, cool. Sometimes they like to farm out the animation to countries that are not this one, much sure. like Idaho. And she's so good. She creates all these worlds, and she, every every po- every little ASMR, see what turns out, my obsession is ASMR. Turns out 
Wow. I was yep. going to come in here and talk about Lake Michigan. We're, We're going to get there eventually. So we still have, we have, right. I don't know. We have, let's see, let's check it out. I'm looking at the camera. We got, we got 25 minutes yet. Oh my gosh. Who knows where this is going to go? So this lady, she's a babe. She looks kind of like Emily Blunt, uh, which is a recommendation. Love it. And I totally forget the name of her thing now, or I would tell you all, but uh, she has all these different intersecting storylines and she plays almost every character. And it's like, she, you're time traveling. You're an alien. At one point you're in like Baba Yaga's hut. She's what? Baba Yaga. At another point you're there's, you're in the eighties and she's throwing some eighties filter on it. And it's not even ASMR. It started out that way, but now it's just like this bizarre. I don't know, man, if you're a dork, there's a lot <laughs> there's a lot out there for you in the ASMR world and I am a dork. I want to believe that at the end of this though she's just like all right looks like we found the blue orb of Tamalka uh, and it inside is a uh, Captain Crunch oops all berries. <laughs> <laughs> Guns bleed out. Mm, that's so right. good. <laughs> that's how she We're like, did this, this lady die? I've been watching her for seven years. I don't know her name. She just bled out in front of me on her camera in her fancy setup. All right. <laughs> the best. Oh, so that's mukbang. You, no. Oh, okay. No. Well, that would be that would be if you were really into if you were into. The mukbang is specific. Okay, it seems There's that a way. Mukbang, not just ASMR either. Like mukbang, there is mukbang that's specifically designed to chill you out. Right. But some mukbang is just for the joy of the chomp, man. <laughs> you just want to see your favorite chomper. It's like, like you know, those people who are do competitive eating and stuff. Oh yeah. Like people watch them and. It's true, I do. I'm a big Joey Chestnut stand. <laughs> yeah, it's so. just like, hey, the love of the game. You know? Yeah. The game recognizes game. Your alimentary canal is wrecked. <laughs> um, <laughs> Top to bottom, in to out, but you know what? T to B, animal, both ends. Or you know what? I don't want to characterize the butt as simply an out hole because I feel that would not be inclusive. So from the finally, in and out someone hole, said it. Thank you. From the in and out hole to the in and out hole. <laughs> Add an in and out burger. Exactly. Love and, it. and in between, it's just watching with in and out. <laughs> You're watching in and out. I yes. would do. Th I would. Oh, you know what? I Kevin would fuck Klein with this classic. channel. Yep. A lot of people forget. I thought that was what Inside Out was. <laughs> Because someone says, like, oh, they made a sequel to Inside Out. I was like, the Kevin Klein movie? Inside Out starring Amy Poehler. Yeah, as yeah, yeah. Then that, that one's a cartoon about emotions. It's wonderful. But it doesn't have nearly as much emotion as Inside In, In and Out with nope. Kevin Klein. In and Out. With, and Joan Cusack. And, with with uh, Joan Cusack. And, and Tom Selleck. Future Republican, probably Republican them, Tom Selleck. Yeah, it's and, a bummer, and, Blue Bloods. And, uh, and the, the stunning... Funny, Joan Cusack yep. turning in a bravura performance yep. as a woman who somehow doesn't realize that her very gay fiance with whom she's never had sex is very gay. <laughs> and when she melts down, when he comes out to her, spoiler alert, at their wedding, yep. spoiler alert, she uh, she gives one of my favorite screaming monologues. I know exactly what you're talking it's about. Beautiful. It's a beautiful scream-a-log. Yep. And it's so good. But then at the end, well, I'm not going to tell you what happened. Yeah, don't. You should watch In, in and Out. It actually nice. held up pretty well. I mean, we watched it not too long ago because we had mentioned it. Because, like I said, I thought that when they said there was a sequel to Inside Out, they said it was In and Out. And I was like, I can't believe they waited 30 years to make that movie. And okay. it's animated and Pixar's done and it. Pixar's That's done great. And Amy Poehler is in it as Kevin Klein. <laughs> but, like, uh, that I was like, oh, I haven't watched that movie in a while. It's a little predate. So I went back and found it. And I was like, oh, shit, this movie held up well. It's funny. I, you know what else holds up well? What? Independence Day. Never never say die. Well, I no. watched it the other day with a child and three adults. Nice. And, um, ones you know. Yeah, ones I personally know. Yeah, okay. yeah. Everyone, Good to know. It was all consensual, and we watched We It was a consent Because you have to be specific when you're talking about watching Independence Day. It's very important to say, yeah, it was a consensual. Yeah, it was a cons you weren't trying to get your friends. You're like, guys, you're going to love this movie. You're like, I don't think we are. No, it was. But you will. It is. It held. That one holds up super well. It holds well. up, and also there. It came out in like '96 or something. And there, I realize there's a joke that is essentially playing with the "Don't Ask, Don't Tell" Clinton era policy in the military because Will Smith's character is this incredible fighter pl right, pilot. Right, right. So is Harry Connick Jr. Oh, character. that's right, because Harry Connick Jr.'s in it. And there's a moment where he discovers that Will Smith has got a ring for Vivica A. Fox, his stripper girlfriend. <laughs> And yeah, the, that plot development. And the way that it happens is that Harry Connick Jr. is, for some reason, on his gets on his knees, goofing around, uh, kind of like 
smacking Will Smith's butt. Yep. I'm not sure why. Because it's then, adorable. But it's adorable. And then he finds the ring and he pulls it out and looks at it and he's like, oh. and then a guy, another uh, fighter pilot dude walks in on them. They're in the locker room and it really looks like Harry Connick Jr. is proposing to Will Smith. And the other dude goes like this and just backs <laughs> away like I didn't <laughs> see it. And I was like, that was a beautiful wordless commentary yeah. on Bill Clinton's don't ask, don't tell Don't policy. ask, don't tell. It's none of your fucking business. That's how I Leave the it. locker room. Nobody judges and nobody uses Not my F- problem. Nobody uses an F slur. Nope. Nobody tries to fire them. He's just like, hey, if you two yep, dudes you do, want you do. to get engaged... You two gorgeous men with stunning stunning men with very, very concrete careers, fighter pilots, go. Go forth and be beautiful. Harry Connick Jr. in Independence Day for the brief amount of time we get to spend with him is a firestorm of sexy. Yeah, he's a smoke show in that movie. You know who else? Harvey Firestein. Yes. Yeah, also a smoke show. And Goldblum. And, well, and Judd Hirsch. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Judd Hirsch Judd is in there. Hirsch Judd Hirsch Goldblum. is in there, just like hardcore New Yorking the entire movie. He's like, wearing, where can I get the like suddenly, pastrami sandwich? He's suddenly wearing a yarmulke. At the yeah, end of it the gets world. really intense. He's like doing like I don't know if he's doing Dianu or what at some <laughs> point. Like it gets very. For those of you in the room not Jewish, Dianu is a prayer. Continue. Thank you. Um, I, I mean, I'm not Jewish, but everyone's I, welcome in the chat cast. But I love, I love uh, the Jewish people, including a uh, Chad. Are you Jewish? No, I don't practice any in particular because I don't think I'm kosher. I actually don't think I am. Oh, you don't. Th- <laughs> so no, I don't think I've been allowed in. I do know my roommate is though. <laughs> you, have, your roommate is. Yeah, but you very have, Jewish. You haven't consulted like a rabbi to, um, to ask. It's I feel like that would. I feel like that would just be asking for it. Yeah, I don't need to be rejected by a rabbi. <laughs> okay. That's a horrible way to go. But your roommate is Jewish. Yeah, very Jewish. Yeah, Dave, do you ever go to? You ever go to high holidays together? Uh, yeah, we've had. I've been to seders before mm-hmm. with him, which is weird because the food is weird. But like, um, what don't you like about it? The herb thing, the bitter you don't herb like bitter shit. Herbs? I don't get. I mean, they're like, oh, you eat it to remind that how horrible life is. I'm like, yeah, well, I do that all the time. It's cold coffee. That's all you gotta have. Is there an egg that weirds you the out? The egg is a little weird. Is that upsetting? For not you? gonna lie, I all get right. it. Yeah, it's a little weird. But this is not. It's not an anti-Semitic thing. You're saying you've been welcomed here. You, you <laughs> no, love your Jewish um, friends just, and family. No, just just to be clear, just, it's not because they're Jewish. No, it's because you because are I am a bird. A bird. I just want to spell that out for the fandom. for the fandom in the comment section. Yeah, it's very important. It's just, but but you know what I love about you is that you love others yep. so much that you say, all right. It would be, it would be like if I went to uh, the Feast of the Seven Fishes, which we have uh, Italian, Italian right? Southern Italians have typically on Catholic Christmas Eve. Oh, yes. And if I looked there and if I just sort of saw like a, a boiled fetus, yeah. that was... That's exactly what it's like for me. For you as a bird to go to... <laughs> it to is to true, though. Theater. That's a hard-boiled egg. I'm like, huh. I mean, I get it. You get it's it. It's not my society, but ugh. I would res- I would respect it. Yeah. You know, if That's, I were you, you do go, you. I respect it. No, so, I do not want to taste it. So you don't practice religion whatsoever. No, I'm more of an outside observer. Do you, believe, do you believe in God? Um, Look at me and tell me there's a God. <laughs> I think What God would do this? I think a loyal- Look at this ridiculous shit wing I have. Can't even fly. Can't even get miles. Not even tall enough. To use a goddamn ATM. I don't, Chad. <laughs> what a dick. Chad, I, I think that you are the most clear manifestation I've ever seen of a loving divine power in the universe. I mean, Whoa. look at you. You're you're all different cute colors. Wait a minute. Are you doing ASMR right now? Did it feel, did your head start I did. To it tingle? actually felt really nice. That's what it was. Okay. Now we found out everybody has their own trigger. Oh, I just like, I just like being complimented. And told that you're a manifestation of the divine. I love being told that I'm divine. Yeah. That's, that's, you would love religion. Divine talk. Yeah. You, you know, you'd love a cult. <laughs> I think you would love a cult centered around you. Which ultimately, I think, is what for those of us who have Chad the Bird merchandise. Yeah. By the way, now, get my merch. Yeah. Follow me on Instagram. It's beautiful, and uh, I almost wore it today, and then I was like, oh, my God. Can they I, tell, know you, who can I, I am. tell you a story? About, Please do. I thought it would be dorky, and no. I just realized why I thought it would be dorky. We spent like 10 minutes talking about the dark crystal. Yeah. Well, once upon a time, I was invited to a pajama party at the home of some friends. One, a stunning American woman. The other, a delightful, handsome British man. 
Whoa. He, he's an actor. He's an actor. This is the this is the the love story of the ages. So it was a, it was there two hot people having a thing on right? either side of the pond, having a function. Hundreds of years of conflict in Beverly Hills. In Beverly Hills. <laughs> in Beverly Hills adjacent, West Hollywood adjacent. So can uh, we call this movie Beverly Hills Revolutionary? Yes. Actually, they they were near. Uh, an area that's called the Bird Streets. <gasps> that's not a joke. That's real. Yeah, I've been there. Near, I know yeah, of the Bird Streets. Near the near but not in the Bird Streets. Which oh, is that's very, the name of the it. Bird Streets is very near nice. but not in the Bird Streets. Right. Natasha Leone <laughs> and uh, Glenn Powell nailed it. <laughs> yes, nailed it. Glenn Powell's so British. He really he plays the no Natasha Leone's British in this one. In my uh, mind. Okay, well, so this is an American man. Wait, American no, woman. No, in your story that actually happened. Fabulous American woman. Fabulous British man, the most British man's an actor, and we're in LA. And is it an actor? Wait, can I? I'm not gonna ask names, obviously. That's rude. But can I ask, like, would be an actor I would know if yes. I were? That's yes. That's why I'm not saying his name. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. <laughs> That's why I don't say his name. So is it Hugo Weaving? I think he's Australian, dude. Oh fuck! I did yeah. that again. I always think he's British. He's a dreamboat. No, I if really it was hope Hugo he's not Weaving, here. I would have said Hugo Weaving. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Because that's just too good. <laughs> if Mr. it was Guy Mr. Pierce, Anderson. I would have said it was Guy Pierce. No, so it's so I'm. There. I just want to watch Priscilla Queen of the Desert. <laughs> it's, it's Sorry, so good. It was okay. So it's it's Christmas or uh, New Year's Day. It's a pajama party. That's very fun. Brunch, fun, wonderful experience. I've been to a few of them. It's lovely. And so what what I didn't think about. Uh, was who was hosting the party as I chose my outfit, which was a a full, uh, it was a Doctor Who uh, onesie. So head to toe, footy, I think, no, it didn't have feet, but it was like head to toe, zip up, hood. Was it like a TARDIS? It was all TARDI. It was nice. all TARDISes, right? So when I walked in, immediately I realized that I had made Perhaps an adorable mistake because I was surrounded by the British actors, British actor friends. Oh no! And Doctor Who over there is like Law and Order franchise over here, or yep. One Chicago. Every actor has been on or will be on it at some point. Yep. So I'm looking around, and I'm at the height of my Doctor Who fandom at this point. Well, did you start with Eccleston? Yes. Nice. I did. I Same. With Eccleston. I, I loved Eccleston. I thought he did a beautiful Me job. Me too. I missed he that doctor. Love it, but I missed the did. war doctor. I loved, but I loved Smith, Tennant. I oh, think, Tennant. You yeah, know, sure. uh, so, uh, and all the subsequent ones. But so I walk in and I'm looking around and I, I could have, if I had thrown any object, I would have easily hit one to seven Doctor Who day players. <laughs> like so many people. For, it looked like I wore a Chewbacca costume. To like to like Mark Hamill's house. Yeah, yeah, or 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 yeah, exactly. Like to Mark Hamill's house and Carrie Fisher's there, and so oh Harrison wow. Ford. So I felt so dorky. I was like, I'm wearing, or or like if I wore a Law and Order SVU like T-shirt <laughs> to Mariska Hargitay's house or something like what? <laughs> it just felt so that and and I was I got I was like oh my god and I saw one particular actor who who's in one of my one of my favorite episode of television ever. And, That's uh, a Doctor Who episode. It was, it's a Doctor Who episode, and there was this very nice uh, gay DJ by me who I had been chatting to a little bit, and he who had said to me, "Oh, I like Doctor Who too," and we were talking, and then we started noticing, and then we saw that actor, and this this very nice man grabbed my arm and looked at me and said, "What do we do?" Because, oh my god! You know, we saw we saw how all the Doctor Who people—they're all in my mind—they're so all staring Doctor at Who's. you right now. <laughs> there was no actual Doctor Who there. I have—I no. s- should say that part. Yeah, but we, just uh, guest stars from all, all our favorite aliens. Oh my god! Weird like guest star. Uh, just and, and some. Uh, it was a lot. And I he. Me and this stranger bonded in our fandom. We had to like walk out because we didn't want to be weird and rude and creepy. And no, because you've already worn the TARDIS pajamas to like the TARDIS convention. To the TARDIS that convention, is this very wonderful British VIP after party. party. So sweet, like so many sweet, lovely people. And you know how it is. And so anyway, yeah. my thought was this: I can't wear a Chad the Bird shirt to the Birdcast party oh. because mm. what am I going to look like walking in here? People know. Yeah. People yeah. know where I'm going, and then they see that. They're like, oh, this weirdo freaking wore a fangirl shirt. <laughs> I love fangirls. I love fandom. I love all that stuff. But what am I? I'm a freaking dork. I look like I want to make a wish thing. God bless the make a wish children. Yeah. But it's like, what did she? Did you feel sorry for her? You had her <laughs> on the program? She came in head to toe, Chad the Bird. I do like that you're wearing a Chicago Cubs shirt. I am wearing a Cubs shirt. 
that yeah. you're like, I live here now. I do. I do. And I am an ancestral Yankees fan and always will be. Yeah. But this is a good way people like to talk to me. <laughs> they do. They see you on the street and they think one of two things. One, go back to the suburbs. Or two, which way is the red line? <laughs> and three, that's a hot girl in a baseball shirt. I yeah. find her non-threatening. <laughs> and that's my brand. You look like a fun aunt. Yeah. I look Where like are we going? Aunt. You had sex before marriage. <laughs> and then never got married. You have stories. You have money. You have money and stories. Nice. You'll get, you know, you know where to go. You that's know where I'm, the party yeah, is. That's what I'm trying to get. So anyway, that's my very long-winded blind item TMZ hot gossip story about years ago when I wore a dorky outfit. And nobody commented on it because I yeah, don't why think anybody they? gave a shit because, no. you know, it's not like. Any, I would have taken it as a compliment yeah, if I was sweet. like, if I was a Doctor Who yeah. and you showed up in a Doctor Who onesie, I would have been like, aw. But, nope. but none of the actual doctors were there because then I would have just had to leave. Yeah, no, like you probably like would have thrown yourself out a window. Or by that point, Smith um, were there. I I would have just. Wouldn't it be amazing if they all showed up in TARDIS onesies? Oh my god, and and me, yeah. Yeah, I feel like they would. That's that's an ASMR video. Play. <laughs> and Wolf Blitzer is there. Wolf Blitzer is there. Chomping on some C three PO cereal from like the eighties. So. You're getting into the <laughs> pickles. What's wrong with you people? Have you ever, Chad, have you ever watched a mukbang of, and I'm sorry to say this, a huge, huge subcategory of mukbang, from what I can tell, fried chicken. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it doesn't surprise me. Yeah. No. Honestly. <laughs> no, I have not. Well, you're not a chicken, but. No, but it would also be fucking weird. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're not a soccer player either. No, that's true. And if you're just watching some humans tear apart a soccer player, it'd be like, ah. I'd be like, this Ugh. is a really weird episode. This is of a Great really British weird mukbang. <laughs> but Wolf Blitzer's here. That's nice. <laughs> He's in. I, I think what's great is that we've stayed on topic. Yeah. I do love that you were supposed to talk to me, or at least you wanted to talk to me about Lake Michigan. But then, when, but then it turned out that But we real revealed story, what your real obsession the was. The story beneath the story. Why, what about Lake Michigan specifically? All right, well, I'll tell you. First of all, I didn't realize how big it was till I moved here. Hey, welcome. I had been here. The lake is east. I, I had been here several times yeah. and never looked at it. Uh, I think because I was partying or I was just, I was always here for like comedy stuff or book tour stuff or getting drunk stuff. And so, or all three. So I never, and but that's not an excuse either. I was just so out of it. I never, I, I don't know what I was doing, but you know what? I said, hmm, I'm going to look at that big ass lake when I started coming more. Cause I was court, I was being courted. I was courting oh. someone. Oh. So I said, Ooh. And then I said, that's very large. It looks like an ocean. You talk about the lake. And uh, yeah, yeah, no, specifically the lake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, but you know, sometimes it takes a variety of large things to make you go, fuck it, I'm leaving. <laughs> and I'm moving to Chicago. You don't. This party is a little too expert for me. <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't leave New York for no. small dick energy. So, <laughs> so um, it is the sec, Lake Michigan is the second largest of the Great Lakes by volume. Second largest. It is the third largest by surface area. Oh. So it is actually 22,405 square miles. That is over three times the surface area of my home state of New Jersey. Whoa. Isn't that three crazy? Three times the Jersey? You can fit three jerseys into one Lake Michigan. And you'll still find what's at the bottom of Lake Michigan. Very little has changed <laughs> in this scenario. Now, here's something funky that I didn't know. Geologically and hydrologically. Lake Michigan and Lake Huron are actually one lake. Whoa. And that lake is the largest freshwater lake in the world. Whoa, we're near that. We're right by that. Yeah, isn't that crazy? God, that's nuts. Think about all the stories the lakes have to share with each other. Do you think they talk about us? Oh, I think they absolutely talk about like, us. Like, uh, Lake Michigan is the only lake that is entirely contained within the United States. The rest of them all have, like, Canadian aspects. So do you think Lake Huron, like talks shit about, like, brings, like, the hot goss from Canada. Oh, I think Lake Huron is just doing mostly, like, hockey facts, and Lake Michigan's <laughs> just like, what? And Lake Huron's just like, what are you talking about, bud? And Lake Michigan is just like, fucking speak American. <laughs> Do you mean football? And they're like, no, bruh. <laughs> this is the most Simmer down. This is the most important thing. Yep. Canadian lakes. Uh, I don't know what constitutes the deep bottom of Lake Michigan, but I do know this. Divvy bikes. <laughs> 
the first person to reach the deep bottom of Lake Michigan was an individual named J. Val Klump, <laughs> K-L-U-M-P of the University of Wisconsin at Milwaukee in 1985. King Klump? King Klump? King Klump? King Klump? With a name like Klump, you know they can sink. <laughs> so they were just like, I'm going to go with it. I'm getting to the bottom of this Lake Michigan situation. Yeah, they said, I'm going to see what's there. And probably what they saw was a whole bunch of nothing. whole bunch of nothing. Murky as fuck. Yep, gross. I, I guess I'm obsessed with Lake Michigan because I look at it every day now. And because it's such a beautiful part of my daily life. And yeah. if I never thought I would move to the Midwest. I never thought uh, I would get excited about a lake. I am from ocean culture and right. river culture. Right, because you are originally from New York. Am I New right? Jersey. I'm from oh, the, you're from, from Jersey. Yeah, we from talked Jersey about this. Originally, yeah. And I've mostly lived in my adult life with a few stops elsewhere. I've mostly lived between... Los Angeles and New York. So I was always real close to the seaside. To the sea. And at least on the East Coast, I mean, yeah, I, I always was close to the LA River, but on the East Coast, lots of different rivers and brooks and creeks and the such. And so I was never, a lake was always like kind of an overgrown pond that was probably kind of gross. Yeah. Oh, it's still gross. Don't, don't get it wrong. I don't think Lake Michigan's gross at all. I it's disagree stunning. for a variety of reasons. Is it because it's polluted? Yeah. It's disgusting. It's mostly condoms and dead gangsters. <laughs> Well, dead gangsters, I mean, as I sort of feel, as a Sicilian American, I sort of feel a real sort of fondness. Like, oh, I'm <laughs> swimming in the the dust and effluvia of somebody to whom I'm probably genetically related. This well, is you're nice. in the right town for it. Come by the Green Mill sometime. <laughs> oh, the Green Mill. I've heard of yeah. that. Yeah. No, you've done the show I've done a few the times. Show. Yeah, I've done the show. I've done, I want to say I've done it four times. I think that's true. Yeah. It's a great time, and I always enjoy seeing you at... Yep. At the Green Mill. Always a good time. They pour heavy, though. Let me tell you this. You were mentioned in the New York Times, Chad, <gasps> by name. Me? Yeah, you were. In the Times? Yes. In the NYT? In the New York Times, I think it was like maybe July 21st. Okay. July, no, it was July 22nd. Whoa. And I know this because I'm a subscriber to that goddamn old lady paper of record. I have a subscription to the New York Times, and I am never able to actually access it. It's I'm you, paying for it. And then whenever I go to read a fucking article, it's just like, you must be a subscriber if you want. And then it like does that little screen thing where it gets mm -hmm. in your way and you're kind of like, eh, stop it. Chad, uh. Chad, you have to log in. What? Yeah. Do you, you have to Shouldn't log it just in. know? No. You Once you log in, if you allow it to stay logged in, then it's okay. I don't like it knowing that I'm reading it. Well, look, I'm, I, I don't like it either. But there <laughs> I was, and I see that there's this article written by a Chicagoan about um, a, a cheap way to travel in Chicago. You know, the Democratic National Convention's coming up. Right. There's many other better reasons to come to Chicago. Yeah, I was going to say, that is not a draw. So many better reasons In fact, to don't come. come down here no, during the DNC. Don't. It's not going to be fun. My house, I've already given my friends a heads up who are coming into town. Some of them are protesting. Some of them are counter-protesting. I'm going to have to really sort of like, uh, it's going to be like Tetris to sort yeah. of figure out who I can have in my place at what time to not yell at each other. Yeah, that's a lot. But, that's like a whole, that's worse than a wedding. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, a lot of them, a lot of people who are with, like, nonprofits and different groups that come in, they can't afford, even, you know, people who work for politicians sometimes, they they bunk together. They're, like, two or three to a hotel room. So I said to some of them, look, you need some chill time, especially if you get overstimulated, my neuro spicy friends. I get it. Or even not, just people who are like, wow, this is a lot. Let me know, come over, have a cup of tea, sit with my monster cat. And uh, I had a point here, but I forgot. Oh, I think oh, the point oh, is that you article. actually own a monster cat, yeah. but it's just a cat that's big, not an actual, like, she, you Frankenstein a cat. No, she really wants to kill birds, though. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I don't fuck you, with cats. You can't come over. I don't, in I know general. you wouldn't want to come over, but no. yeah, yeah. No, no, she really wants to kill birds, but yep. she lives inside. And uh, so anyway. That makes it worse. Because she's stewing in it. Oh, she's she's a few stories up, and she sees them fly by, and she's nope. ready. I'm, I'm like, good. Nope. I'm sure, your place is very nice. It's lovely, but uh, so, uh, yeah. So this this Chicagoan wrote this article about like how to visit Chicago on the cheap and have a great time. Turns out, I figured, but I saw it confirmed. So many amazing things you can do here, including get a fantastic tour from an official city guide for free. For free. And one of the things was they went to the paper machete. <gasps> At the Green Mill Lounge, and they saw you, Chad uh, the Bird, a hilarious uh, avian op-ed. Yeah, that's what they called me. And, and I was like, okay, that's fair. It's a little too PC for me. You just call me a fucking bird, but well, that's fine. That's or fine. a drunk bird, as I have been referred to several times in papers. 
this drunk bird. I'm like, first off, yes. Second off, how did you know? Well, but anyway. they said the paper machete hilariously comments on current events and the such, and, and you are part of that hilarity. Mm. You got a specific shout out by name, I believe. In the New York Times. Incredible. Wow. I was so excited. Do you think I'm going to be in the crossword? Yeah. <gasps> yeah. That's the dream. It's going to be who should you not invite to your Seder? <laughs> Not because of anti-Semitism, but because of emotional issues tied to the hard-boiled egg. <laughs> it's a very long question. Four letters. <laughs> oh, that's my alarm. We did it. We did it. We did it. it. 45 minutes, no edits. What's going on? Hey, let me shut this uh, off. Shut up. What um what what are you what's happening with you uh what's next where where can people find you right now Oh you can find me on Instagram at s a r a j benincasa Sarah J benincasa I'm at sarahbenincasa.com I have a Substack newsletter called Serotonin Nice at, That's right and uh, that's at sarahjbenincasa.substack.com and uh, I'm doing the paper machete sometime in August the nice. weekend before the uh, the, the Democrat, the Democrat National, National that's Convention. That's what I'm doing it. So I'll be, I'll be hanging out there with you, Chad. And yep. you know, I don't drink anymore. So please drink all of the drinks I would drink during that time, which would be a lot. And I'll do that in your ear. Thank you. Extra ice. Thank you. Crunch and munchins. <laughs> and uh, hey, hey, that's a good Sunday. Saturday. May, may it's a good Wolf Saturday. Blitzer, may Wolf Blitzer launch his ASMR channel here in Chicago at the DNC. Muck bangerang, baby. Muck bangerang.